Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Tucker and Crowley Report, part of News Now and the Belmont Journal. We've got Franklin Tucker of the Belmontonian with us, and I'm Mike Crowley. Uh, Franklin, what have we got this week in terms of the news? Well, uh, we have uh, a little bit of a foreshadowing of what uh, appears to be um, uh, what will happen during um, uh, the fall, and that is uh, changes to business bylaws. Now, this is something something coming to the, the special town meeting this fall? That's right. And it specifically uh, uh, zoning uh, changes um, that would uh, affect uh, uh, businesses here in, in Belmont. Uh, they want uh, uh, what we are seeing is that the uh, select board is looking to uh, amend the zoning zoning bylaw for for uh, hotels as a permissible use. Okay. Also business signage, you know, the signs that, that business has put out and also uh, restaurants, a whole litany of uh, things that can open a restaurant quicker. So the, in, in effect, I mean, it, uh, par part of what's intended here is to make it easier to open a business in Belmont. Is that what's happening? That's right. And, and this is called the, the, the low hanging fruit uh, by Elizabeth Dion, who is really pushing for these um, these changes you know she says you know rome is burning you know we're, we're in a structural deficit let's try to uh put as many you know business friendly uh bylaws as possible as quickly as possible because we need the revenue and you know she is right in that and in, in that sense uh but there's you know certain you know uh pushback that we what we always see where, and um, where are we seeing pushback from well, we're seeing it from uh, some of the um, uh, town um, uh, 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 town uh, departments or or, or, or or town committees who would have to be uh, uh, who would have to do the work. You know, the planning board um, said, "Yeah, we'll do the sign signage bylaw." You know, if you want the wording, you know, we'll mm -hmm. we'll, we'll work on that. But they said, but you know, as the as the new planning um, uh, chair uh, uh, Jeff Bearbound said, you know. That's, it's not one of the highest or best uses of our of our time, you know, because they're doing a lot in, in terms of just what regular business they do in, in, in the planning board. Now, they said they would do it, but maybe that would be, a, uh, maybe we'd have to wait till the spring for that if they can't get around to it. Now, the, the, the restaurant bylaw uh, would be done by the Vision 21 committee. And they're going forward with that. They're 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 pushing forward with it. And they, they would do, it wouldn't be like um, uh, open, <laughs> it wouldn't be like a, 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 a open range where restaurants can just go into your neighborhood and, and go there. But there's also questions about, you know, do you really want to make it a more open, you know, more, an easier way to do it? Because you have restaurants and, and they bring uh, parking issues, you know, well, and, and you want you want to have neighborhood, you know, uh, comment on these. So you don't want to open it up too too much. So they're going to have to work carefully on this, even though it seems like a low hanging fruit. It could be controversial. Now, now the the restaurant issue is that also is that also or are zoning changes affecting restaurants also an issue for for um, our board of health? Uh, not really. I mean, the board of health has its you know it, it knows it has its list of things to do. I don't think they're going to do it in in terms of, of board of health issues. <laughs> okay. that's that's a state issue. So that's you know the the, the, the zoning board can't. Um, I mean, the, the the board of health has its own you know uh, dictates and that's okay. statewide. So this this the, the town can't really move over those. You know, okay, they can't push the board of health aside. All right. Uh, so and there, and there and there's also like I said the hotel one and that you know even Elizabeth. Uh, Dion was saying that, um, you know, there could be controversy there because remember there was a, uh, uh, the last time a small um, boutique hotel was going to be put up on, um, I believe it was Pleasant, Pleasant Street or on Pleasant the, Street. The corner of, of Pleasant and I believe it was um, Brighton. Brighton, it? that's right. Uh, and uh, that was back in 2016 and the planning board basically said no. And uh, there was just a lot of controversy yeah. there. It was also controversial because uh, the uh, Dunkin' Donuts that's now there right. was coming to, to the planning board. But, but was most of that controversy generated by, by the neighbors? Yeah. Or, or was, there, was there an issue there for the planning board that, that, that really... Um, they just didn't have anything in the, in the bylaw that said, you know, they could go forward with it. I see. You know, so, uh, and uh, I think it had to do with parking, you know, All another right. parking issue. But they also, but Elizabeth Theon is saying that, um, 
you know, uh, and who Elizabeth Dion is on the on the Slack board, you should right. say. Uh, you know, she said the last time these came came here, that you know, uh, the residents did make a lot of she calls ridiculous and specious <laughs> arguments uh, that uh, all hotels attract drug use and sex workers and to the town of to, to the town of homes. And uh, she just says that's just you know. It's just not the case. But so there's going to be a lot of education that has to go forward, you know. So this may be something, this this will be something that we may see in the spring rather than than, um, than the fall. Okay, well, we'll have to see what happens with that. Um, next up, uh, we have some controversy at, at the Benton Library in Franklin. Can you tell me what that's about? Yes, the Benton Library is a wonderful uh, library in Precinct 6. Um, it's on um, Oakley, <laughs> I think it is. Um, I, I, I forget what that road is, uh, but it's on Oakley. Um, it's a, if you've ever gone there, it's a small independent library that was once part of the uh, uh, Belmont Public Library uh, system. Uh, now it's independent and it's open, you know, a few hours, I think like 16 hours a week or something like that. And, but it's just wonderful wood, you know, just a, a beautiful um, uh example of like late you know 19th century architecture in the english you know uh in the english mode it was a it started off as a chapel for for a boys school here which we had here so um, so architecturally it's very interesting but 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 that's not what the controversy is <laughs> no, about no really so uh, what what uh there was an agreement uh between the benton library uh and the uh, uh belmont public library they, they would have a mem memorandum of understanding where the Be Belmont Public Library would basically take over um, the uh, Benton Library for the period of time that the uh, new library is being built. Now, and, now, 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 is it a takeover or a sharing of space? I mean, would the Benton it's, still be it's, operating? It's, it's, it's one of those. It's one of those where it's an understanding where uh -huh. if when the Belmont Public Library has it. They will immediately, once they get into the new library, give it back to the Benton Library uh, Board of Directors. You know, it, it, it's just basically a, a sharing. It okay. is, is a bit of a sharing. Now, what they were going to do, the uh, Belmont Public Library, is put the uh, children's room in the Benton, which would be great because it's a beautiful small site. It, it, it just it just it would be a perfect place for for kids. Um, uh, that was. Uh, we, they thought it was a perfect place until uh, many of the neighbors, uh, close by neighbors, came by and said, "Oh no, no, you can't do it. You know, it's it's, it's much too much. Um, you know, we have too many kids playing in the street, running around the street, playing baseball in the street, and it's, it's just, it would just be so unsafe to put children there because you'd have so many cars." Now the now the uh, you know the library said countered that by saying, "Look." Most people uh, who, who, you know, the, the children's room is one of the most popular parts of, of the, uh, the Belmont Public Library. Um, so, uh, but they even say, look, most people will say, you know what, see you in two years. <laughs> you know? You know? So this will just be a, a very limited number of, uh, of um, you know, uh, visits, as they said. So, so let me ask you how serious this, this uh, controversy is. Is it, is, it, is it so significant that that this is going to alter the library's plans for for where it places the ch the children's reading room, you know, uh, while the new library is under construction. Well, that's what the neighbors hope. The hope, neighbors hope are saying, "Can't you find someplace else?" Now, the library is basically saying, "Look, we're building a library. We don't want to spend money renting another space. Plus, there's there's just not any space around that you can even rent, um, much less use." Um, and they're saying. You know, and they have a they have a state requirement that says well, you have to give out a certain number of hours to stay within the library system. Okay. You know, and the whole thing about the uh, uh, the adult section of the Belmont Public Library, which will be at the uh, Beach Street Center, right. is that you know uh, how they're going to keep their services is by by relying heavily on the Minuteman um, you know library um, so ne network, network or system. Yeah, network. And uh, uh, that's that's how they're going to uh, you know bring books to Belmont. And if they don't have a certain number of hours, you know, the, the state could be really come down hard on them. And you know, we don't want to lose the libraries, uh, basically a credit you know accreditation. accreditation for you know a year and a half or two years. So it's but 
you know, when the, the select board basically is is telling the library, you got you got to either shorten the times, you know, or do something. And and I think that's what they're what they're going to do. Well, this is going to be something that's going to be um, uh, talked about. I think there's going to be a public forum with okay. the library and the neighbors, and then there's going they're going to come back to the select board with some kind of solution. Okay, that sounds good. So, so for people in Belmont who are interested in yard sales, what have we got to look forward to? Well, uh, thank you to the uh, <laughs> thank you to the. The rec department, um, the, the Belmont Public Library, um, and the town. Um, we are we. There is now scheduled a, a first ever townwide yard sale set for uh, September twenty third, the first Saturday in uh, the fall. Now, now, how does that work, Franklin? How does a townwide yard sale work? Well, you register to be on the on this sale mm -hmm. and. Um, uh, you'll be put onto the um, uh, rec center's, um, you know, system. Uh, it will list everybody who's who's doing this. They're going to try to put some centralized locations also, okay. so everybody can just go to this. And it's going to be from nine to three. It, it, basically, they're going to be pr uh, promoting it. People will get excited about it. You know, be and it's it, uh, it also it's on the on the day of the. Um, uh, the first day of the uh, Belmont Public Library's book sale, which will be the last one for at least two years. All right, so a big, uh, a big sale day. In, yeah, in and, and the thing is, is that yard sales have been really uh, being diminished, especially over the um, when when COVID happened, and more people are using Facebook and other social media to sell uh, their their excess uh, goods, and 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 so this is a great way of of, of bringing people into town. Recycle and re giving you the opportunity to recycle uh, anything that you have rugs, clothes, kids' toys, you know, things you find at yard sales. And, and you know, it's $15, but it's going to a good cause, which is the rec department. We have that old bin of Legos that Goodwill won't take. I know. Why don't I? I don't understand. We'll, we'll give that away at the yard sale. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Franklin, um, Belmont is getting not a monster truck show, but the return of Touch a Truck. What is Touch a Truck? Oh come on! How do you? Know? It was one of the big events last year. It was really a big event. Happens in the Claflin uh, parking lot in Belmont Center, and basically it's every big truck you could ever think of: the town snow plow, the trash truck. That was a very popular okay, one. So, so Belmont's version of monster trucks. Exactly. They're not going to be moving. Thank goodness. Uh, because uh, the place is just filled with kids. It's uh, and, and you know it's the fire department, police department, everything from the DPW, every big truck, every big loader, uh, all the construction firms that are in Belmont. They're going to bring theirs down there. And if you you know if, if if you like screaming kids running around and large horns going off every three seconds, this is for you. Right, Franklin. And we may just see more adults there than kids. The, uh, the adults love it just as much as the kids. Okay. All right. Thank you, Franklin. And you can see more of Franklin's reporting at Belmontonian.com. That's all for next week. Be sure to watch us next time, and we will see you then.